On the 25th of June 2014, we had traveled to Turkey to a city for a business excursion. And on the third day of the excursion, we went for sightseeing. On our way back, we had this terrible bus accident. I was tired from the trip, so I was sleeping. I don't remember much, but I remember that I opened my eyes and I just heard a whooping sound. And I opened my eyes and realized that we we're about to have an accident. And I just shouted, Jesus. And that was all I remembered. As I came to myself, I saw my hand was torn. The flesh was gone. I could see the bone. And I was about to let out a shout. I felt something the Spirit said to me, I will make you whole again. And a peace came over me that I can honestly not explain to you, except that the Bible says that He will give us peace that passes every understanding when we go through things. And He gave me that peace. At that moment, I did not know what had happened to my head and my face. It was only the hand I, I could see. But I stood up and I walked out of the bus. And as I, as I came out of the bus, I saw one of the organizers of the trip, Team Moti. He saw me and let out a shout. And I asked him, Team Moti, what is it? And he said, it's OK, ma. You'll be OK. You're OK. And they led me to sit down. And they surrounded me and started praying. And one of the, um, the, the boys on the trip removed his shirt and I saw that they had covered, they placed it on my head. When we got to the hospital, they did the, all the scans, they did all the x-rays, but when they came out, the doctor announced that it was only my flesh that was torn. There was no broken bone, there was no injury to my brain, there was no injury to my skull, I wasn't bleeding inside. And the brethren were so happy. The truth is, at the point, I really didn't know the magnitude of what I was involved in because God had taken away the pain. I was numb. Nobody showed me a picture, so I didn't know the magnitude of what happened to my face. The miracle of it was that the, the, the ambulance driver took me into a hospital different from the one he was directed to take me. And the next day, they began to look for where they had taken me um, to the hospital. The Turkish people don't speak English as a national language. They speak their, they speak Turkish. You know, so it was a miracle to have somebody that could understand English because I didn't know the name of the hotel we were staying. I didn't have the number of any of the organizers in my head at that point. I didn't have my bag. I didn't know where anything was. And they were asking me, where, where, who brought you? Where are you staying and all of that? And I just told them that we were staying in a university guest house. And the man took it upon himself and called the university guest houses that he knew and they got the number of the coordinator and they came and took me from that hospital to where I'm receiving treatment right now. From that point to today, I've had 11 surgeries to what you're seeing, to what, the, what you're seeing now to fix me to this point. 11 surgeries. And God has done an amazing job. If you look at the pictures of Actually, the pictures I have of, of after the first surgery, the main accident, they did not allow me to see. But when they finished the first surgery, the doctor asked me if I wanted to see. And I said, yes. So that, those are the pictures I have. And even from then to today, you see that God has done a miracle. It's a miracle. In the past one year and three months, I have been in and out of the hospital. It's been a difficult journey but God has been with me. God has been amazing. I cannot tell you the extent of the love of God that I have experienced in this one year. God has raised up helpers from all over the place. Um, God has paid the bills. Um, 11 surgeries, and if you are abroad, you know that it's, it's been hundreds of thousands of dollars to this point. But God has been faithful. I could have been dead, but he kept me alive. And I am waiting to hear what he wants me to do for him, and I will do it. 
I want to thank God for, the, for his love. I want to thank God for the prayers of the saint, for Family Worship Center. Even far away in Turkey, they were calling me, praying for me. I thank God first and foremost for Pastor. She prayed, she encouraged, she supported um, financially. I thank God for my daughter. I don't know where she got the strength when she came to be with me in the hospital for six months. But she was amazing. She told me every day that I looked beautiful in spite of all the things that were going on with my head and with my face at the, at the time. But she would tell me every day that, Mommy, you're a beautiful woman. When you have life, when you have health, you have abundant life. If you, if you woke up this morning and came to church today by yourself, you have abundant life. I want you to know that God is good. If you have good health, cars don't matter. They do, but truly, if you are healthy, I want you to rejoice and to give God praise. Because you don't want to be where somebody needs to take you, give you a bath, take you to the toilet. The secret things will become public things. <laughs> you know, so when, when you can do your secret things by yourself, then that is abundant life. I want to give God praise.